Hey everyone, welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. So today we're going to be doing another digital map painting, as you can see in the example here. So as always, we need to make sure that we're in Cycles Render and that the video resolution is the same as the movie clip that you're using. So you also want to make sure that this is at 100%. If it's at 50%, which it is by default, you will have some trouble later on. So make sure that's at 100 and we're good to move on. So now we can switch this from the 3D view to the movie clip editor. Go ahead and open up your movie clip. So this is the movie clip I'm using. So again, I'll throw links in the description if you want to download any of these assets. So first of all, we can go ahead and set the scene frames. So right now it's only at 250, but if this is a longer clip, you can go ahead and set the scene frames. Now it's far too long, so I'm going to change that back to 250 frames. Uh, and then we can go ahead and prefetch. So now we need to check and see if this uh, movie clip is moving so we can see if the camera's got any motion. The easiest way to do that is if we zoom right in, pick a spot, say over here, and just play through. We can see that actually this clip is, is on a tripod, so there's no movement, which is good. If the camera was moving, you would need to track this spot here, and then later on you'd need to add a translate node and then a track position node. I've done that in a previous tutorial. If you've not seen that, I'll throw a link up here. You can go and check that out. But it's pretty simple to do. If your camera is moving, then any assets that you add into it, you will need to make sure you track them as well. So now we've got this. I will come back later on and add a couple of masks, um, but for now, I'm just going to move on. Change this to the node editor. Then down here, we need to change it to the scene tab. Then check use nodes for these two nodes to show up. Then check backdrop. So we can get rid of this render layer. We don't need it. You can either press X to delete, or if you've got the node wrangler add-on, you can just press shift S to change the type. So it's up to you which way you want to do it. Again, if you want to just do it the old way, you just press X, shift A, go to input, and we can go ahead and add a movie clip. But again, with the Node Wrangler add-on, you can just uh, change any node by pressing Shift S instead of pressing Shift A. So handy little tip there for you. So let's connect this up to the composite node. And then let's go down here. Instead of opening, we've already opened a movie clip within Blender. So it's already linked. We can go down here to this movie clip icon. Then we're going to click this movie clip here. So we see a little preview of it here, but we don't see anything in the background. And that's because we need to add a viewer node. So again, Shift A. Go to output, add a view node, and then connect that up. So the background's far too big. If you've not got this side panel open, just press N to open it. And then we can go all the way down here to where it says backdrop. Let's just zoom out. And you can also, if you click this and uh, move your mouse, you can move it and then left click again to position it. Or you can hold Alt and then click your middle mouse wheel and just uh, move it around like that if you need to. So first we're going to render out a still image and take it into a photo editing software of your choice and I'll show you how I compose mine but, uh, but then we're going to bring it back in here and then we're going to add in the, uh, the movie clip elements so, and obviously color grade it and a few other little things just to make it look even better. So first thing we do need to do is render out this as is. So let's go over here to the render. So now we have this. This is going to be a reference image. We're not, the only way we're going to use this is for a reference so let's go ahead and save this. So you can just go down here to image and then save as image or you can press F3 just to save that. Comes up with a save window. So now we want to save this in your project folder. I'm going to name this reference. I've already done that you can, as you can see here. Just resave it. There's no problem with the, <laughs> the location but I wanted to flip it on the other side just because I think it looks a little better. So that's the first thing I did. And again we need to flip this in Blender. Then I added a cliff top which is it's just this little edge here. And uh, the way I did that is I used a lasso tool and just copied a little section here, moved it over and just uh, scaled it down a bit, flattened it, and then obviously made a little bit of an edge. And then I went ahead and added a little town on top. And again, these images I'll throw links in the description. I added a, a lighthouse, which is down here, it's pretty small. Same thing for this one, it's, it might be hard to notice, but I just added this little one here, just to add a bit more depth into the shot. And then also up here I added the castle. Then I started to add some shadows, so if you notice over here on the town, just added a little bit of depth here and also the shadow for the castle. Just I wanted it to, as if the town was set in a little bit, so that's why I kind of added these shadows here. Also some contact shadows as well. 
and then for the last bit I added a shadow at the back so the mountain that would add a bit of a contact shadow there as well if you a bit more of a shadow so again these shadows just to make it try and make it look as if it's sat there in the real world uh, same thing for the lighthouse I added a back shadow and also I added a front shadow just a contact shadow here so then I went ahead and added the cliff so for this I just copied a section here which we couldn't really see then I just moved it over and rotated it and then cut out a nice little shape so I added a shadow here for the top then I added some trees some more trees of a shadow for the rim here and then finally I added the face which is kind of the main focal point of the shot I mean this is one of the focal points but uh, I wanted like a carved face look now again all these clothes are far too bright and hopefully when we blend it in uh, it will look better for the face it was pretty simple to do and if you guys want to see that I'll just quickly show you now if you don't just go ahead and skip this and uh, get to the compositing in blender and the first thing you want to do is find yourself a nice face image to use. So I'm going to drag this over. Let's just drop it here. This guy's got an interesting face. And I thought it'd be perfect for the uh, the theme that I'm going for. This kind of old protector sort of. So yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is scale this down. Just so somewhere like this. And what we can do to help position it. If we just reduce the opacity of the layer. So then I'm going to use the lasso tool or the free hand tool if you want to call it and then you can either click and make loads of points like this kind of like what we do in blender or what you can do is just left click and draw yourself a nice little selection and again take your time to get a nice selection right now I've just rushed that but you get the idea so now we've selected the face and what we need to do at first is make sure that it's got um, alpha transparency again in GIMP you need to right click on here just you can click add alpha channel since it's grayed out it already has one we press delete now we do this so let's control z what we want to do is invert the selection and i'm going to press control i just to invert it then i'm going to hit delete and then the first thing we can do is uh, get rid of the color so let's go to colors i'm going to go down to desaturate so now it's asking you to choose the shade of gray based on one of these options and really it's whatever looks good to you at the time like i'm going to switch through these I mean, this looks okay, but other situations or other images will need a different option. So again, check it out and um, make sure you're happy with the selection, but you just want a grayscale image like this. Now, the next thing we need to do is bring in a texture. So I'm going to go over to my texture folder again. And this time I'm going to use a brick or concrete or rock texture. I'll throw a link to a place where you can download um, rock textures maybe I'll try and find this specific one as well but I'm going to use this one I'm going to drag this and bring it over I'm just going to drop it in here now it's a bit too big so I'm just going to scale this down again we can reduce the opacity as well to kind of see how it looks if we... it kind of gives you an idea how it will look so let's bring this back to 100% if we go back to the man layer this one here, select this layer uh, we can mute this texture first what I want to do is go over to this magic wand tool or the fuzzy selection tool whatever you want to call it and I'm going to left click here just so I have this selection the trouble with this is it's also selected this square here so um, you'll kind of see what happens in a minute but um, this is because the layers are two different sizes uh, it's simple to fix but I just kind of wanted to show you um, this is why but if I bring back that stone texture and then click on the layer and it's important we click on the layer now if we press delete we delete this part here so it kind of boxed off this section here so we could just um, if it was any bigger what you could do is just select this box selection tool or the rectangular selection tool <laughs> and then just make a selection like this and again press ctrl i to invert it and then you can press delete and just delete the rest of it anyway so now we have this i'm just going to deselect everything the rock texture layer selected I'm going to go over to filters and then I'm going to go down to map now, so for different programs it'll be a different option some programs it might be displaced but we don't have a displaced map for this so we're going to use the bump map so you can kind of save and make this bigger as well what it does it's using itself as an image to sort of create a bump map now, if we change this here it's this bump map and we need to find uh, go all the way down here we need to find that face image so you can see that the man's face has appeared on the uh, 
on the rock texture. And we can play around with these settings. You can invert, you can tile, you can go ahead and change things. So yeah, you wanna find something that looks good, play around with this and the depth. Once you've got something that looks okay, I'm gonna press okay just to confirm that. So now we have this. With this, again, with this layer selected, I'm gonna change this. So you can use a couple of these, I think multiply or darken. Let's try multiply is good. This one might be a bit too dark. If we go to darken only, that's okay. Let's go ahead and merge these down. So right click on this layer, merge down. Now we can go over to the colors, colorize, and then change the hue to maybe an orange color, reduce the saturation, increase the lightness, something like that. Uh, you wanna match this a lot better, but once you've done that, then go back to colors. And then this time I'm gonna to go to brightness and contrast. And this step can be a bit of a pain because you're trying to match the two sort of images. But you also want to blend this in as well. So get a nice soft brush, blend that in. It's got a sharp edge. And then we can reduce the opacity of this. And if we see this natural formations in the rock, that looks good. I think the face that I've got is a bit bigger. So we use this natural uh, formation here. But what I did is I got the uh, free selection tool and just sort of made a lasso selection like this. And just deleted part of it. Same thing for up here. So the natural formations come back and it looks pretty good. So keep that in mind when you're positioning it as well. Reset this again. And then this is a sharp line here. So let's um, feather this a little bit. I mean, that color is horrible. So let me just see if I can uh, get that a little bit better for this example. So it helps when you zoom in as well. I'm trying to match this with this. I don't need to worry about looking at everything else. Let's just try and match the colors. So color, hue saturation, something like this. Let's increase the saturation as well. So slowly moving these around, you'll find something that kind of works. But another thing I did was give this face more dimension, make it look 3D. If we zoom out, we can see it kind of looks flat and um, yeah, just, just as if it's stuck on there. So. What I did for this is just, I just created some shadows. So go ahead and create a new layer. And make sure you have a black color. Change the brush. <laughs> so now we have this, let's go ahead and blur things. So go to filters. And then I'm going to go down to blur, Gaussian blur. So this blur is going to be quite big since this is an overall blur. So let's try that. It's pretty good. Now it's a bit too dark as well, but if we see the difference before, before and after, just adds a little bit of dimension. So let's change this now to, I'm going to change this to darken only. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity to this. So we just want something subtle. We don't want a you know, too crazy amount. So now I'm happy with that, I'm gonna merge it down. And then, so now I'm just gonna create another layer and do the same thing. But this time we're gonna do it a little bit smaller and not blur it as much. And this is gonna be more of a fine detail look. So let's change this back to the brush. Let's go a bit smaller with the brush. So again, let's go over to the filters. So now let's go to ratio Gaussian blur. So now this time let's go less. That's pretty good. Now it's a bit too dark, but it's still good. But let's change the blend mode to darken only. And the reason why I do that darken only is because when you go outside the lines like this, and then, and then when we merge the, uh, the layers, this line will still stay here if we had the normal mode. But since we change it to darken only, when we blend the, merge this down, it only applies this black line to the texture or to the layer underneath. So 
that's the reason why I do that. Uh, the next thing I would do is reduce the opacity of this just a little bit. Like you could see when we reduce the, the opacity, it kind of blends in the, with the rock. So even just a bit like 90% is, is better than 100%. You can see, get more of a blended look. And again, the colors are not, um, they don't really match that well. So I need to go back and change the colors. But um, again, I've done this before with this one here and it kind of fits a lot better. But you can kind of see this has got more bump on it and this face here if we go back it's got less bump on it so again take your time decide what looks good um this one took me a lot longer than what we just did here so it just shows you you know the difference between them okay so now we have uh, the images that we want let's get rid of this new one here so we've got all these images what we've put in place so all of these Take me a second just to activate them again. Again, these, there was a lot more layers than this, especially with all the shadows and everything else, but I had merged a lot of them. I just kind of wanted to break down and show you the individual parts. We're just going to get rid of the background like that. And we're going to, we're just going to export all of this. Let's go ahead and export this out. So for GIMP users, go to file, then down to export as, and then just save this out and make sure you save this as a PNG just so you save the alpha transparency, go ahead and export. So now we've done this, our work in Blender is a lot easier. We just need to throw a few things together and compose it and hopefully make it look good. <laughs> so let's go over and do that. So this is where we left off in Blender. We just jumped over to GIMP and then now back again. So let's press escape just to go back to the node editor. Now for this, I remember we flipped the image. So we need to do that on here. So shift A, down to distort. And we just want to go to the flip, just drop this on the bottom string here, connect this up to the viewer node. And again, I did that through the lazy connect way by putting control shift and left clicking. And that will only work if you've got the node wrangler add on. So make sure you've got that on. Let's just close this down since we don't need to worry about it again. Shift A, go to color, alpha over, drop this in as well. Connect this up to the viewer node. Shift A, go to input going to add in an image plug this in and let's go ahead and open it up so now we have this looks okay and um, the colors and things I mean I'm not happy with the colors so let's go ahead and do that so let's try and fix these colors I mean it's okay but for me it's far too um, saturated I guess I mean and most of you guys probably know this my style is faded and um, misty especially for coastal scenes like this kind of a given so let's go ahead and try and do that shift a I'm going to go to color and then I'm going to add a hue saturation value node just drop this in here and then I'm going to also add a, a color balance so shift a color color balance this is a, a really easy way and probably not the best way but this is an easy way to get the colors that you want so let's start with the hue saturation node the hue we can probably leave as it is right now um the saturation that needs to be brought down some then the value bring this down as well so for these colors i want to change just these two which is the shadows and the midtones so i want the shadows let's try a blue color midtones let's bring it into the greens try and bring out the greens of here i'm also going to add in rgb curves can brighten this up as well That's not looking too bad. If we go over to the alpha over, we just need to make sure that you convert the primal, which is, as you can see straight away, it fixes all these issues. I'll show you the difference. Get rid of these, just press mute. So that was before, this is after. I think it looks a lot better with these colors. Again, this is entirely up to you. It's by no means the final color grading that will happen at the end. So there's a few things I want to add to this. Um, I want to create that kind of fake mist and we've done it in quite a few tutorials now so you probably already know how to do it but i'll show you how i'm going to do this It'll be pretty simple i just need to create a mask just to mask around this part here so i want to add some water to the top here and maybe a waterfall just dropping some water down um and then again we can go ahead and add some color grading and yeah call it done uh, shift a go to color mix drop this in Shift A, movie clip. Just drop in a movie clip here, plug this in. 
Now obviously we need to load in a movie clip, so what we can do, since we're going to create a mask as well, we change this window from the 3D view to the movie clip editor. And then over here we go to the file icon. So we can go ahead and load in your second movie clip. So for this one I'm going to use, um, let's see, just a simple water, any, any kind of water will work. You just need to know which direction it's going and you know the kind of the light and stuff. Um, if I prefetch this now, we can play through and see which direction the water's going. Okay, so that's good, the water's going this way. Change this from the tracking since we don't need to track anything. Let's change it to the masking mode. Let's click new. And this is gonna be for the water. For this, we just do need to create a basic mask and then we can come back and refine it when we can know what position we want. So I'm gonna do this. That's going to be a bit too big, but it should be all right. We can refine it. So now we have this. Let's go back and connect it up. Node editor. Go to this icon here. Select the ocean or the calm water. Then I'm going to press Shift A. Go to input, add in a mask. Select the mask. Plug this into the factor. We get this pool here, which is pretty good. So before I go back to the mask and make any changes, I just want to put this in position. So let's go ahead and do that. Shift A, distort, transform, and drop this in here. Now, it, since we're moving this, we also need to move the mask as well. Otherwise, if we don't, we'll get this. It'll move, but the mask won't. So make sure we do this. Shift D, drop this in. And what we can do is we shift A, go to input, down to value, let's just drop this in here. And we duplicate it two times, like so. And then plug these in, this into the X, this to the X, this one to the Y, and the Y, and this one to the scale. Like so. so now we can use these three nodes to control it and move it in position. Uh, to make some more space, what we can do is we press A, press B. I'm just going to select these three here, and I'm going to press Control J just to create this frame. So now I can move these around anytime I want to. So I'm going to move them down here like this. So now I can and give us some space, and now we can see this a bit better. Press N to bring up this sidebar here and just zoom in. And now let's position this. Now what we can do, we can either scale it down like this, we can go back to the mask and just reduce the mask. So I think I'm going to do it that way with a mask. So I'm going to split this window. Instead of jumping back, I'm just going to split this window, change this to the movie clip editor. I'm going to press T, N. So now we can see the mask and we'll be able to see it in real time as well. So when we move this, we can see it here. So that's going to help us try and position this. I'll speed this part up so you don't have to wait around, but essentially I'm going to try and position this and make it look okay. I'll be back in a second. And we need to fix the colors, but I think that looks pretty good. There's a bit of an edge. So we might as well add in the next movie clip. If we just bring over here, select the folder icon. So I'm going to use this, and again, if you want to play through uh, to make sure it's, the camera is not moving and to see how fast this is, uh, you'd need to press T, change this to the uh, the tracking mode, and then prefetch and then play through. I already know this movie clip's on a tripod. I don't really need to prefetch this, so I'm just going to go back to masking. Let's go ahead and create a new mask. So now I'm just going to control click. Press Alt C to close the mask. Now we have this. Now we can close this window. Right click and join. We just want to join these windows. And bring that back up there. Now we can add in the waterfall. So pretty much the exact same steps. And because it's the same steps, we can copy these nodes. So I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to select B. Select this node, this node, this node. This one, these three and it's frame, why not? And this movie clip here, Shift D, move this over. We can just connect this up 
and then connect this up to the viewer and the composite node. So now we've got the exact same effect right on top of each other. So now all we need to do is just refine this and change it. So let's go down here to the movie clip. Let's click the movie clip icon and change it to the uh, the waterfall. Then the next thing we can change is the mask. Change this to the waterfall mask. So we don't see any difference. Let's just reconnect this up. As soon as we do that, we see this. And then let's select these three here and press delete space, which will reset all these to default. I'm gonna flip it, we can see it's coming down this way. I just want it to go this way. So the way we flip this is we need to add a flip node right after this movie clip. Shift A, go down to distort, then go to flip. And again, since we flipped this, we also need to flip the mask, otherwise it doesn't look right. So Shift D, flip the mask as well, and close these down. Now we have this. Now we can position this uh, using these frames. Um, but there's one more thing we need to do. As you can see, the waterfall is too small. So let's just position it first. Again, we can drag this down here out of the way. Okay, so what we could do, we could scale this up a crazy amount, but then it just looks wrong and out of proportion. So back to five. In fact, I want this to be less. That's still too big. Now that's the size that I want. <laughs> You're probably thinking that's ridiculous. That's not the size of a waterfall. So we do need to stretch this out. So let's go ahead and add a couple more nodes to the setup just to make this work. So I'm going to just drag this mix node out here a little bit. I'm going to shift A, go down to distort. And this time I'm just going to add in a scale node. I'm going to drop this right after this transform node here. Then I'm going to shift D and add it right after here as well because since we scale the movie clip, we also need to scale the mask. So now we've got this. What we can do, just shift A, input, value. And then I want to connect this to the Y and the Y. So now it's even smaller <laughs> because it's reduced to 0.5, but if we change it back to one, we can see this. And the more we increase this, the bigger it gets. We can see it moves out of position as well. So we just drag this node, this new value node and put it underneath here. Just like this. Now let's change this to three. It's all the way down here now. So let's bring this back up like that. It's still not big enough, so we might need to go, um, let's try four. So that's not too bad. Um, again, the color needs to be fixed as well, just to make it blend. Colors, what we could do over here, if day, color, RGB curves, increase the blue. Go back to the uh, color channel. Let's increase this. Same thing for this water over here. Go to color, RGB curves, drop this in. The next thing I want to do is add some fake atmosphere. And again, we've done this before. I change back to the movie clip editor. Let's change the movie clip down here. And it's that first one that we loaded in. Now let's go down here, click new. It's going to be the atmosphere. So again, for this atmosphere, what I'm going to do is just trace around this rock here all the way around until I get to about here. And then I'm just going to go around to complete the mask since I want this area to have atmosphere. And, and again, we'll use this side later on, but it's mainly just to split these two sides. So we have more of a distance. So again, I'm going to do this pretty quickly and it's the same thing we've done before by control left clicking all the way around and then when I get to the end, I'm going to press alt C to close it. So I'm going to speed this part up, otherwise you guys are going to get bored and there'll be nobody left watching these videos. So let's go ahead and speed through this. I'll be back in a second. I went through that pretty quickly. I didn't. I would go back and refine these if I need to add some points. Um, just control left click, add the next point. And when you're happy with it, let's go over to the node editor. Now, for this, it's pretty simple. We just shift A, go to color, RGB curves, drop this in here. And shift A, go to input, mask, 
select the mask icon, this one's at the atmosphere. Plug this into the factor, left click, and drag this up. As soon as we do that, this should start fading off, but it doesn't because we need to do a couple of things. What we need to do with this mask here, if we shift A, distort, flip, I'll just fix it right up. So now we have this. This island, it, would, it wouldn't go straight from no mist to mist. There would be some sort of um, gradient at least. So we, we could mist the other side as well, but with a less amount. So let's do that. And we can do that with just these nodes here we've already added. So I'm going to select this one. Shift D, just drop it in right after. Plug that into the viewer node. And then this node here, I'm going to drag it. Bring it over to the factor. So it's exactly the same. And now if we shift A, color, and then if we add an invert node, and I'm going to drop this in here, where we added that second mask. As soon as we do that, it just flips the colors of the mask. And now they both have exactly the same amount of um, distance. So let's fix that. Remember, this is the one on the closer side, so it wouldn't have as much. I drop this down. So that looks better then. So another thing I probably would do is add some smoke or a smoke layer here. Use this mask so it goes behind this mountain. Since when the uh, the waterfall would hit the water, it creates some sort of mist. That'd be a nice little effect to add in as well. And then I head and get some color grading. Again, color grading is subjective, so it's entirely up to you how you want it to look. The um, but once we've added these elements and you've added the color grading, you want to render this out. Go over to the side panel here. First thing we can do is set the output. So click the file icon. Then we can go to file type. You can either save this out as an image sequence or as a movie clip. I'm going to save this as a movie clip. Then I'm going to go down to encoding. Then we're going to go to the presets and choose H.264 in MP4 format. Go ahead and hit animation. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to give it a like. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.